just to, uh, to remind you, uh, those who have heard this before and, and for the information of those who have not, uh, uh, my name is Jonas Thorsnefsson, I come from the Great University and uh, I've been monitoring a lot of uh, or several structures in Iceland and, and uh, uh, it will ask part uh, for uh, a quick uh, motion and uh, so this uh, is a case from uh, one of uh, our monitor building uh, where we had uh, observed some uh, uh, effects from subsurface uh, soil layers on, on uh, structural response and uh, the uh, the study area is uh, uh, South Iceland, uh, and in particular, uh, a specific building located in Selfos. And we have uh, that we acceleration and uh, and seismometry data and structural analysis that's been done on, on the buildings and kind uh, of modeling. Uh, vulnerability curves are available for the uh, uh, buildings in this area based on. Uh, Damage estimation after, after the events. Uh, so, so there is a considerable amount of uh, data available. Um, the study uh, uh, really uh, evolves around uh, three <coughs> big uh, earthquakes that uh, occurred uh, two in the uh, year 2000, and uh, which are. Uh, uh, not that close to the, uh, uh, the building that uh, is the uh, uh, is a, a center of the topic. Uh, but then in 2008 we had uh, a third earthquake, which is actually uh, only about five to ten kilometers uh, away. There was actually a complicated uh, fracture, and there was a very so there were uh, two faults that uh, went off more or less simultaneously. Uh, with uh, the closest uh, epicenter uh, just uh, roughly five kilometers away from the town. <coughs> and uh, these, uh, this picture shows the, uh, the aftershock for uh, uh, sh the, the few months after the, uh, the main event. And this is the building, it's a three-story building uh, with a basement. And we have instrumentation in the building on the top floor. Uh, the red sensors uh, each corner and uh, in the center, and then in the basement we have a triangular <laughs> uh, <coughs> So the building is built in the 1940s. It's uh, instrumented in 1999, just uh, prior to the the first uh, earthquake uh, series that we had there. Uh, so uh, and what we uh, actually noticed was that there was uh, very strong dissimilarities uh, in the structural response characteristics for these uh, uh, two events in, uh, in 2000 at a distance of uh, 15 kilometers and in 2008 with a uh, central distance of uh, 5 to 8 kilometers and, uh, and uh, we had uh, of course much larger uh, uh, peak ground accelerations in uh, the 2008 event, only 13 uh, of G in, in 2000, about 54% in 2008. And uh, we had sort of a normal response in 2000 with a magnification factor from uh, the base to the top uh, of part three. But in 2008, we had a much lower magnification, 144. And uh, so uh, <coughs> we also noticed that. Uh, uh, the uh, frequencies observed in the recorded uh, signals had all shifted uh, down. And, uh, and we see this also in, uh, when we compare the uh, horizontal vertical spectral ratios that uh, the peak used to be at close to 8 hertz here, which uh, harmonizes uh, with the natural frequency of the structure, uh, or goes down to uh, 2 hertz. Uh, the natural frequency of the building is, is uh, around 7 hertz, so it, 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 it's uh, in, in this range. Uh, it's, uh, uh, for a low-rise building this, like this, it's, uh, you don't get really very clear peaks. Uh, well you can see it uh, here, for instance, this, this would be the natural frequency of the structure. 
close to eight words. <coughs> and uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, so we expect we have a hexagonal uh, rock soil profile based on uh, a uh, borehole or a section that was made uh, not that far away from the building within the surface area. And uh, then we see that there are uh, the building would be on top of this, uh, and then the underneath there is uh, lava layers, compound lava, scoria lava. And then the uh, sediment layer, and uh, of a couple of meters, two or three meters thick, which was uh, accumulated uh, during the ice age, during interglacial periods, where uh, we had sea level, uh, where we have uh, 100 meters above sea level today. So the sea was uh, uh, flowing over this uh, area, where we now have a uh, lot of building and agricultural. Uh, uh, area and uh, then on when the ice uh, age uh, was finished 10,000 years ago there was a lot of volcanic activity in Iceland and then the lava flew, uh, flew over the or flowed over the, uh, the salt sediments so uh, we have uh, in a different uh, structure close by the church tower we have sort of uh, verified that uh, if we make a simple model of the uh, of the uh, uh, foundation structure, uh, we get a very good uh, correlation with uh, the natural frequencies of the tower observed in the top of the tower. But if we don't include the uh, the uh, uh, foundation levels, then we, uh, we then we are never able to simulate what we actually monitor because the structure itself is much stiffer, it's closer to uh, 10 hertz. Uh, so, uh, the prior design assumptions for buildings in the area was uh, that uh, we had the stiff soil or, or a rock base, and that's uh, what, uh, and based on that you picked out uh, the, uh, the loading from uh, Eurocode, uh, we are a response vector or whatever. Uh, <coughs> and this was, in, in a way, verified by the earthquake event in 2000, which didn't show anything other than that this would be uh, an okay way to, to, to go, a good assumption, that you had stiff soil there. But then in 2008, this uh, changed, so we have strong soft soil effects. And uh, the effects of this soft layer is basically that uh, it increases the PGA values at the surface, and therefore it induces, uh, induces increased action on building contents and there was a lot of damage on building contents in this, in this event. <coughs> and, uh, but for uh, short period structures it acts as a seismic isolator. So if we have a structure with a uh, frequency of uh, 4 or 5 hertz, uh, it will actually, the safety of the structure itself will increase so we are talking about one, two, five, or maybe up to six story buildings. Uh, and we see this uh, partly from the magnification factor that uh, I mentioned before. But if we have uh, longer period structures, uh, then it will actually act as an exciter because uh, the soft layer will basically uh, be, uh, so, so the, the Long period structure will be sort of a secondary structure based on this uh, primary structure that is vibrated at a frequency around uh, two hertz, and we get uh, decreased safety. So, uh, <coughs> so this is basically a summary of what I've already told you uh, regarding the information. Uh, so uh, there is not much here that. Uh, Actually, but we have data available. Uh, we have done some analysis, uh, but um, and, and those further analysis would uh, include uh, uh, some information updating, maybe uh, changing frequency content of excitation, and uh, which is uh, we believe it depends on uh, the magnitude of the action, and this may have consequences for uh, structural design. Oops, that was too close. So. Uh, 
So what uh, my idea was, and what we were discussing yesterday, uh, was to uh, um, do a sort of a simplified model for building a foundation, uh, where the foundation layer would have uh, probabilistic dynamic parameters. Uh, we could uh, do this for a series of buildings. Basically, put uh, in w with the simplified uh, simplifying assumptions, uh, just uh, vary the uh, area of the uh, top structure, <coughs> and we could have uh, two foundation cases, active and inactive, uh, soft layer, or or we could uh, even have one case with large uh, variability in, in uh, stiffness, and we could. Maybe use uh, drift limits to determine the safe or unsafe uh, behavior. So, so that would be the. Uh, and for unsafe, we, we would have a decision like uh, to improve the knowledge through uh, uh, further uh, analysis, such as for section analysis. Or we could demand uh, additional foundation work so that the buildings would be built on piles, for instance, instead of uh, on top of the uh, lava. And uh, or, or even uh, not to build. Uh, so, uh, but this is uh, uh, not uh, the final uh, formulation, I think, but uh, but sort of the idea that uh, this is ongoing. Was it very interesting? Very interesting example. Are there any questions? Um, yes. I would like you uh, maybe also it could add uh, value to your work is. Um, Probably to use an accelerometer and uh, on the soil because you're doing the soil yeah. structure interaction. Yeah, uh, one, one, one thing would be, of course, to, to implement. No, but just uh, not need to implement, just to do the H over V ratio method for uh, yeah. the soil and that, to see the frequency of resonance. and. Right, but that's basically what we have uh, already in a sense because we have the, uh, we have the instrumentation in the building uh, as I. This is in the building. But you can do yeah, but, but the, but the, but the building, I mean, we have the uh, accelerometer, is, it's in the elevator uh, uh, core at the bottom layer of the building, so it's just above the uh, surface layer, basically. So, so this is basically measuring the surface acceleration. Yeah, but not the... Maybe it would be better, I don't know, but I think it's uh, influenced by the structure. Uh, not yeah. that much, uh, actually. You need to put it uh, uh, next to it and uh, so where you have just the soil? Uh, no, uh, there is there's not much uh, interaction. Uh, the, the, uh, this is sort of the uh, traditional way. Uh, this is the traditional way for the structure. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is the input into the structure. And, and there is not much difference between this and uh, an accelerometer out in the free, 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 uh, free field. There, there is, uh, you, you don't, especially for a stiff structure like this, you don't get that much interaction. I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, discussing the interaction, just for example, I'm discussing more the resonance. Yeah. So probably if you get uh, H over V, you would know the peak when the soil is going to get into frequency. Yeah. And you compare it to I the peak of, uh, so this point, just to check if there is a possible the, this is, uh, this is uh, HV, uh, spectral ratio that we have evaluated from the uh, basement measurements. So, 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 so I, we, we, I think that this should be done systematically <coughs> on, on all uh, our data. Okay. Uh, I agree with you, definitely. And, and that would give us uh, also uh, an idea about uh, the variability uh, with time, because uh, the, uh, when the earthquake uh, hits, it sort of puts everything out of uh, uh, shape and it softens up the layer. Yeah. But as time passes, the, the soft layer may stiffen up again. Okay. And we, we uh, are in position to track that. Uh, mm. We have data, but we haven't really uh, done a systematic analysis of it. Yes. So the idea is to use or not the monitoring of the soil? Well, the monitoring for, for, for the this, for this study, I think the data would be mostly used for validating the initial uh, modeling in a sense and, and per per perhaps evaluate the, uh, uh, the, uh, the probabilistic characteristics of the, uh, of the uh, parameters for the foundation to, to 
put uh, some value on, on mean and variance and things like that, based on, on the, the, uh, the data that we have. For instance, uh, uh, perhaps like the spectral, uh, for example, uh, uh, vertical spectral ratio. So, so, but, uh, yeah. I've, uh, <coughs> I think this is a very interesting case we have been yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We have been trying to. Yeah, after the decisions, I would recommend to uh, uh, get forward with this. Uh, a very interesting case. Uh, okay. Do or host a shorter term division. Yeah. And uh, get a clear decision scenario. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is uh, maybe not very. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> too many decisions? <laughs> 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 Gmail. Because very interesting. Uh, I, I think uh, everything is there. Uh, yeah. But it just needs some structure. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, maybe a few yeah. weeks' effort. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, uh, I'm going to finish my. Uh, <laughs> Fact sheet and, and uh, to yeah, try to do a full chart and then uh, yeah. through that we yeah. would maybe yeah, get some, 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 uh, some more structure. structure. Yeah. 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 But uh, for the SDSM uh, are good idea mm -hmm. and probably it might be very useful to me to get a student uh, to visit me or to work on this. Yeah. If, if he has participated in the uh, in the, in the training, uh, Anybody who would like to <laughs> make an SSM to Iceland? <laughs> Iceland. <laughs>